from the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. I have been with women from around the world. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here's the latest on the presidential race, because we're getting down to the wire here. I mean, Election Day is coming up in about four weeks. Two different polls, one from CNN, uh, which is taken by Opinion Research Corporation. This is a national presidential race. The numbers uh, taken from likely voters. Barack Obama's biggest lead yet. Barack Obama now 53%. John McCain, 42%. Now, it says here that Obama's 11 percentage point lead over McCain comes when three minor party candidates like Ralph Nader are included. But when Obama and McCain are matched exclusively, Obama still has 53 percent, but McCain comes up to 45 percent. That leaves only 2 percent undecided. Says here, either way, Obama's lead has grown from the narrow advantage he had two weeks ago in this same poll. 43% say Republican vice presidential candidate is qualified to be president if necessary. So if you want to know what percentage of America is an idiot, there it is right there. By the same token, 80% say so about her Democratic counterpart, Joe Biden. Six out of ten people. These are the likely voters. Six out of ten think Obama will win the election. And the sampling error is plus or minus 3.5 percentage points. So even with the margin of error in that poll, Obama's the winner. CBS News had a poll also. In their poll, Barack Obama has 48 percent, McCain 45 percent. This also likely voters finds a tighter race than most of the surveys have measured recently, it says here. 57% are confident Obama would make the right decisions about the economy. 53% say McCain would as well. Those numbers are about reversed over who would do the right thing on Iraq. More people have favorable than unfavorable views about Obama by 12 percentage points, but are evenly split on McCain. It says here almost two-thirds say Democratic vice presidential candidate Joe Biden could be an effective president. Two-thirds of the likely voters in the CBS News poll. While only 37% say so about Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin, I can't believe that 37% of anybody thinks Sarah Palin is qualified to do anything. But there you go. So here we are coming up on the uh, four-week mark. Uh, it's four weeks from tomorrow, Election Day. And, uh, of course, uh, if you're voting, I imagine you've already made up your mind at this point. How many people are undecided at this point? Let's get the goddamn thing over with by now. But uh, the CNN Opinion Research Corporation poll shows Barack Obama now at 53%, highest number ever. The CBS News poll shows Barack Obama at 48%, but Obama leads in both of these polls. So uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk about what's going on. By the way, did anybody see the Saturday Night Live opening sketch on Saturday night where they uh, parodied the uh, Biden and Sarah Palin debate, it was it was really, really brilliant. It was outrageous. And if you go to NBC's website or Hulu.com, you can watch it. But uh, I thought it was really, really excellent. Anyway, all right, your telephone call's coming up. We're just four weeks away from Election Day as of tomorrow. Which way are you leaning? Tom Likes. Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likes Show. The 
Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Well, we read you the latest in the polls. CBS has Barack Obama 48%, McCain 45%. CNN has Obama 53%, McCain 42%. In any case, if the stock market continues to perform as it is, and if Sarah Palin continues to look like a national joke, well, there you have it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's William on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, you guys. How you doing? Hey, this is Bill from Fort Worth. Yes, well, it's just me, Bill, uh, me and you. What? Thank you for calling. 1-800-5800-Thomas Rich. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Not much. Hey, let me let me ask you a question. Two years ago, the Democrats took over the, the Congress. They got the majority. And- by, by a very small majority, and one of the members of the Senate who is listed... Uh, in most people's eyes, as a Democrat is actually an independent or a Republican, uh, Joe Lieberman. Well, Joe Lieberman is a whatever would get him rated next. Is That's what he is. Whatever. But, the point but, is that he generally sides with the Republicans. Right, right. Well, well, we're, we're, we're worse off than we were two years ago. And, you know, the... Well, we have the same American president public. we've had for eight years. We have uh, Congress for six out of the last eight years was run by the Republicans, and even now, it's pretty close to fifty-fifty. Right. Well, our, our president hadn't taken taken care of home. He's been too worried about you know taking care of everybody else. And he hasn't done, and he hasn't done a great job on international affairs either. Let's face facts. No, no, I, I agree. But but where we're at with Congress, and everybody should know that it takes. Congress and the House and then the President to, to make things happen. So, you know, you can vote Democratic or you can vote, vote Republican. I, I live in Texas. You know, we're a hardcore Republican state. But, you know, I'm going to take care of who takes care of me and us. And and me and us means me and my family. And yeah. I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat. It, right. it, 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 it shouldn't matter. Um just take care, of, take care of the house, which means the United States. You take know? care of our house, yeah. Take care of our house. Get back to, get back to taking care of us. You know, Reagan, Reagan bless his heart. The man took care of everything. Business there, business here. And so did, so did Jimmy Carter. You know, and Jimmy Carter was soft. Uh, you know, and you know Clinton. You know, he obviously took care of everybody. <laughs> Maybe one at a time. So who are you voting for? You know, I, I hadn't made up my mind yet. Really. I hadn't made up my mind. I, I thought um, everybody had. I think Palin is, you know, like the Barbie doll for 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 the Republican Party. I think they they pulled that out of their out yes. of their tail, hoping that uh, <laughs> you know, hoping that that would throw everything into their court. But uh, you know, the the younger people are loving it. Uh, you know, I'm middle aged, so I I I see through it. You know, there's there's you've never heard of her until a month ago. You know, and it was. Basically, uh, you know, here's what we're going to do to to block the Democratic parties, you know, their national convention. Here's what we're going to do to down downstage it, and uh, you know, it's working. Yeah, it worked uh, for about two point. weeks until people started to get to know what Sarah Palin was all about. She's a blithering idiot. Yeah, she's she's. I, you know, I, I don't think any of them are ready. I truly don't. I don't think any of them are ready to take our country over. I mean, we're talking well, number I mean, one look, commander look, in we, chief. We, we have had the biggest moron running this country for eight years. It can't be any worse than what we have. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. The moron, he did good run in Texas, but, um, you know, uh, it's kind of like the farmer that's got 100 acres and he can handle it, and then he buys 500 and he can't handle it. That's kind of what happened there, you know. Uh Bush is a good governor, maybe even a good mayor, but uh, as far as president go, he's 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 just lacking, and he's too. I think he focuses too much on one thing, and then has forgot about the house, and that being the United States, you know, taking care of the house. Right. What do you think? Uh, well, I'm going to vote for Barack Obama primarily because. We just need to change who's in office. I, you know, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a liberal, and I'm not a Republican. Uh, I'm a fiscal conservative, a social liberal, but a fiscal conservative, and more importantly, a fiscal conservative. 
Um, but the people who call themselves Republicans or conservatives, they say one thing and do another. Right. Tom, how old are you? I'm 52 years old. 52. I'm 45. Here's what I think. Our, our era, and you're not far out of my era, um, our era is not hardcore Republican, not hardcore Democrat. I think we think it all through and think of who's going to take care of us. Um, I think we got, you know, unfortunately, the mostly older people vote. Um, the younger people really don't vote a lot. So, you know, it kind of falls to who the older people, who gets paid off the most, you know, unfortunately. Um, and that's, you know, that's sad. But I think, I think, I think Barack's going to win it personally. Um, I'm in for a change as long as we take care of business. We don't try to be socialist. Um, you know, take care of the house. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, I'd like to say one thing to you. Yes, Rich. I, pr- I appreciate how you tell it how it is. Um, that's what I, that's why I listen to you. Thank you so much for that, Rich. I really appreciate it. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. Saturday Night Live had just a brilliant opening on Saturday. I wanted you to hear a piece of this. Uh, Tina Fey came back to Saturday Night Live. She's no longer in the cast, but she came back again as Sarah Palin uh, in her debate with uh, Joe Biden, played by Jason Sudeikis. You know, John McCain and I, we're a couple of mavericks. And gosh darn it, we're going to take that maverick energy right to Washington and we're going to use it to fix this financial crisis and everything else that's plaguing this great country of ours. (laughs) How will you solve the financial crisis being a maverick? You know, we're going to take every aspect of the crisis and look at it and then we're going to ask ourselves, what would a maverick do in this situation? (laughs) And then, you know, we'll do that. (laughs) And Queen Latifah was playing the part of Gwen Eiffel. She made a cameo on Saturday Night Live. Just amazing. Did you see that? 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Tom, how are you? How are you? Doing great. Man, Sarah Palin, can can we get any stupider governor to try to run for vice president? Because I, I don't know if it's possible, but then again, she did show up, didn't she? Well, she showed up, yes. <laughs> I mean, my gosh, this woman doesn't know anything. She doesn't even answer a question. Her question, answer, is another question. And she she doesn't all, answer any questions. They're nothing. We, we all sit down and, and, okay, it's like, it's like, what's the foreign policy? And, and I'm going to sit home and be like, I don't have a foreign policy. I don't know. And then she'd go me on TV, what's the foreign policy? And she's like, I'll get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, you got to be smarter than we are. That's what we want. Someone smarter, not someone stupider. My gosh, <laughs> this woman is retarded. Oh yeah, I know she's outrageous. Uh, I <laughs> anybody who takes her seriously, you can't. You can't. <laughs> I'm I'm amazed at these numbers I'm reading here. Forty three percent of the people of the CNN poll said Sarah Palin would be qualified to be president if necessary. Are you kidding me? They need to go out back and shoot themselves in the head. Of course, this is a country where twenty percent of people believe in UFOs and eighty two percent are Christian. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's it's sad. I mean, how can you even think that she would be a good vice president? You must be a very, very strong Republican. And... Or, or just a complete idiot. Uh, Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. Hey, Tom, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the problems with uh, the bogus polls, you know, these polls. Who are they taking the polls on? How many people do they have doing them? You know, where is this at? Well, but, you know, again, Bill, I, I'm sure you haven't followed uh, the Gallup polls over the years. Uh, the Gallup poll, with few exceptions, are, are right on almost every single election on the presidential race. Uh, you attacking the methodology of the poll without knowing anything about it, you're just wrong. Uh, well, the, the polls are rarely wrong in this case. Yeah, exactly. They are rarely wrong in the case of presidential politics. So it doesn't really matter. Clearly, uh, it has been demonstrated over the years that the polling organizations have a science and they know what they're doing. Yeah, it's just whoever's giving them the most money, you know, the most cash flow. Why do you believe that? I mean, come on. 
Hey, first of all, CNN paid for the poll. It was not uh, Barack Obama who paid for the poll or John McCain. It was CNN. Well, the thing is, there, CNN gave all the money to Barack Obama so he could win. They're funding these guys, major bucks. Wait, you know? wait yeah, They're prove big. it. I, I want to know where you're getting the information. Where are you getting that from? This, it, there's a huge conspiracy going on. Then right now, where now. Is, I want to know you. where the proof is and where it can be found. I want to know specifically where to go to get the proof that, that you have. These are just the facts. I you mean, don't, people, no, no, they're not facts. This is a, an anonymous caller calling a radio show and trying to pull one over on the audience. I won't allow it. Unless you tell me specifically where you got that information, I'm done with you. Oh, the Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOB is our telephone number. It's Ben on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. Dude, I just wanted to tell you that Keith Overman just ripped Sarah Palin, a new A. Really? On his show. He talked wow. about everything that uh, he, that she spoke of, uh, Barack Obama, uh, about him being a domestic uh, terrorist. And then he turned it around and, and said that uh, she was uh, with uh, a priest in South Africa that uh, was a terrorist himself. So how can she tell Barack Obama that uh, he's a domestic terrorist when she was uh, in cahoots with uh, one himself? I Look, yeah, I, I'm in way over my head hearing this. I don't know any of this because I don't watch television uh, while I'm on the air with the sound up. So I have no idea what Keith Olbermann is saying. All I know is that uh, Keith Olbermann is a mama's boy, and Keith Olbermann, uh, let's be honest, uh, yeah, you know, right. He's, yeah, sure. He's got ratings on television and a good friend of mine is his producer, a former producer of mine, as a matter of fact. Uh, but, uh, let's face it. The guy is no different from any of uh, the rest of us big mouths on the radio. And just a big mouth opinionated guy. Well, he opinionated big time uh, on uh, MSNBC uh, about 20 minutes ago. Well, I understand, but I, I didn't hear what he said. And I know he's gone after O'Reilly, and, uh, you know, that's what he needs to do to get big ratings. <laughs> Good for him. But, uh, you know, he's also uh, said a lot of negative things about me over the years, and so I really have nothing good to say about him, except he should try getting behind the wheel and driving his own car, which he's apparently not able to do, from what I've heard. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yeah, yes. I have a question for you. Are you concerned about the fact that Barack Obama wants to remove the cap on Social Security taxes, which would cause you to pay... You know what? Whatever I pay in Social Security taxes would pale in comparison to what I lost in the last three months under George W. Bush. I'm not concerned about taxes at all, because the biggest tax of all is not taxes. The biggest tax of all is making the dollar worth a dime. And that's what's happened over the last eight years. So no concern about that extra money. I couldn't care less because, let's face it, the dollar is worth what it was worth anyway. And the reason it isn't worth what it, what it was worth is because we continue to devalue it. All right, that's all and, I have. And your president uh, has uh, supported the devaluation of the dollar to help businesses uh, with their exports. We had a lousy trade imbalance, and uh, instead of fixing the root cause, they devalued the dollar. And so you have been taxed. Uh, under the table without even realizing it. Under the guise, oh, no, we cut taxes, we've, we've been cutting taxes. No, they, they cut your income tax that you, you send in on your 1040 every year, but they tax you by devaluing the dollar. That's a tax, too. And, it's a, and, and between the stock market tanking and the dollar uh, shrinking, uh, I couldn't care less what the taxes are. I made more money with higher taxes under Bill Clinton. Period. End of story. All right. Thank you. That's it. I'm not a Democrat. Just telling you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We read the two polls uh, that are uh, out today. Uh, CNN, Barack Obama, 53%. John McCain, 42%. 11% lead. When you include the, the, the third-party candidates, when you take out the third-party candidates, Barack Obama still has 53%. But uh, McCain jumps to 45%, and the rest undecided. 
CBS News poll is a tighter poll. Barack Obama, 48%. John McCain, 45%. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, you are the only guy I've ever heard on the radio talk like you just talked to this last guy, this fiscal conservative talk. That business they taught me in Econ 101, Milton Friedman Economics, budget deficits make inflation, inflation is a hidden tax. And you're right when you say these Republicans have been put, talking one thing and doing another for all my adult life. We've only had a balanced budget under Clinton, and that got the government out of my life because they weren't competing with me for credit. Man, it amazes me. A year or two ago, you were talking about how the gas prices were going up because the dollar wasn't worth anything. The people selling us the oil, were they wanted more of these pieces of paper that weren't worth anything. Man, it's just amazing you'll say this because the rest of the media industry won't talk about this. I've heard it one other time when they would talk about the value of the dollar, for example, affecting the price of gasoline. And this administration, as you point out, they've had Republicans hand-in-hand hand with them for six of the last eight years. They've gone along with these policies. This McCain now says he's going to do the same. So I say, if you want more of the same, you vote McCain. Because I, you know, is the other guy going to bring a ton of change? No, they'll put up all these roadblocks anyway, even if he has the wits to do it. But it's very clear. And who looks the most like George Bush of the four candidates right now? Leaving the gender issue aside, it's Mrs. Palin. No education worth mentioning. No, no brains that you can see. No experience. No depth. You know, and she's going to be a maverick. They ran that story eight years ago. George Bush was going to be an outsider and solve all our problems. It's, it, you know, and he was the son of a president. Same old tired story from these guys. Got to be a change, man. You need to keep it up. Well, thank you, Joe. Can you believe how many people think I'm a liberal? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's amazing. And you get these people calling you up the last couple of weeks and you've been getting into politics for them, and they spout the same thing. Oh, they're going to tax us, and they're going to do this, and they're going to do that. It's, just, it's the stuff they've been fed by, uh, you know, by your competitor, the, the ex-drug addict in the morning, and they've just been told this stuff over and over. And, and you don't have to be a liberal to figure out that that, that stuff I was just talking about economics – that was Milton Friedman economics they taught me a good generation ago. Absolutely. Well, I, I am a hardcore libertarian with a small L, and that means I'm a fiscal conservative and a social liberal. But uh, uh, the, the social liberal comes second place by being a fiscal conservative. Yeah, just keep talking this tax trash to me. And usually every time they do these tax reforms, they find a way to hose you. You know, when they change the estate taxes, as I understand it, they took away that stepped-up basis thing, which helped people keep these keep a house and not have to pay a ton of taxes on it. Now you got to pay a bunch of gain if your parents die you know, and their house is appreciated. So they always do this, this sleight of hand thing here. They, they, they've allowed these policies to run the economy into the ground and keep playing these games with people and keep telling them everything's fine, everything's fine, and they export your jobs, they export your industry. What do we got left? Not much that I can see. And, uh, you know, more of the same, vote McCain. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Joe. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Shay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, I just wanted to address the fact that you know I find it very strange how Palin's coming out saying Obama is associated with this terrorist, Billy Myers, and I want to. I'm always concerned that how it never gets brought up the fact that her husband was part of the Alaskan Successionist Party for about seven or eight years while they were married. And uh, it bothers me, the fact that, you know, she's saying country first, this and that. Well, she's pretty much sleeping with a person, literally, that wanted to separate their state from America. And it bothers me that that doesn't get out, you know. If they're going to start attacking Obama on character, how come that doesn't get played, you know? Well, uh, that makes sense. But again, I, I think it all gets played between the Internet and television and talk radio. I think it all gets played somewhere because certainly you have the information. And uh, I've heard that, too, about uh, Sarah Palin's husband, Todd. I, uh, 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 In fact, uh, they've tried to uh, uh, downplay that and, of course, have avoided answering any questions about it because Sarah Palin avoids answering any questions she doesn't want to answer. Exactly. Well, I just think maybe, you know, for you having so much of an influence on people that maybe, you know, a suggestion maybe that you can start putting that out there more into people's heads so they realize, you know, because we don't have too much longer left and 
you know, I think that's a big thing if they're going to start playing on carrots since they have really nothing else to attack Obama on. Yeah. yeah, I know. Well, you know, again, it's the last four weeks, so you're going to see a lot of mudslinging now. Exactly. Um, I lived in Arizona at one time. I dealt with John McCain personally, who tried to get me fired from my job because he did to me what he did to David Letterman. It's so funny. It's 20 years later, and, and, and <laughs> John McCain did to David Letterman what he did to me when I did a radio show in Phoenix, telling me he wasn't doing radio and couldn't be there, and the next day appeared on another show. Ah, oh, God. It's, and, then when, and then when I pointed it out on the air, I don't know if he's tried to do this with David Letterman. He should call, uh, uh, you know, uh, Les Moonves or Sumner Redstone and find out. He tried calling my boss and tried to get me fired. <laughs> he personally called. It's typical. And they and can't deal it when the chief is His strong. worst nightmare is that I would have a big, fat radio show on the West Coast when he's running for president. Exactly. Because I will say and do whatever I can legally do. To keep him from getting elected, because the guy, the guy cannot be trusted, cannot be trusted, cannot be trusted. And you watch all the slimy, dirty tricks they're going to try in the next four weeks. Oh, I know. Well, I'm really glad and appreciate that you're a supporter of Obama, and I really hope you stick it to McCain as much as you can. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Just past half past the hour on the Tom Likas Show. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Nate on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nate. I just wanted to respond to that idiot that called in regarding the uh, conspiracy theory re yeah. with the Gallipos. Uh-huh. That's bull. I worked with Gallup for a while, and everything is planned out, plotted out, computerized. There's no way, no way that there's any sort of full conspiracy going on there. Uh-huh. And it's idiots like that, but, you know, I mean, it's one thing. I know the polls are just polls, but the fact is, if... You know, you have these people calling or talking about how there's all these conspiracies and all these things going on. It just it bugs me. It drives me nuts. Well, look, if you want to say uh, uh, stuff like that that is uh, unsubstantiated and unsubstantiatable, say it on your blog, say it on your Facebook page. But d don't be calling here. You're not going to have a free ride here uh, saying that stuff. You're just not. Exactly. There's so many for that kind of crap. Call my buddy Sean Hannity and tell it to him. Exactly. Exactly. That's all I had to say, and I really appreciate it, Tom. Can you take, could you all blow me up? Uh, yes, I can blow you up. Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. tom That's our telephone number. Jay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Uh, I'm first doing time okay. caller here. Thank you, Jay. Uh, here's, here's something. So just one more thing to add on to those, uh, idiot Republicans that, that are so, so hardcore Republican. Sarah Palin, who can't even answer a question, has a one in five chance of being president in the next four years. How do, how I mean, do you calculate that? Well, I, I heard it on CNN. So I figure that they've got the facts pretty much straight. I mean, he has, what, he's had, what, four heart attacks? The man's. 70, 71 years old. Oh, you mean if McCain wins? Yes, yes, if McCain wins. How can you know if she has a one in four chance? We don't even know if McCain will win. If he doesn't win, she has a zero percent chance. Well, I hope, that, I hope that that's the way it goes. And, you know, and if CNN is giving Barack Obama all this money, good, let him. Obama needs to win. We don't need these idiot Republicans Come on. running. Anybody who's got proof that CNN contributed money to Barack Obama, I'll pay $10,000 for that hardcore proof. But I want to see a copy of a canceled check. Hey, you know what? I, even if they aren't, I wish they would. He needs to win. I, I don't care whatever happens. You don't care how it happens. Yes, I understand. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like It. The Tom Like It Show. It's Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. The two presidential polls we're looking at right now, CNN shows Barack Obama 53%, John McCain 42%. If you list the third-party nutcases, the fruitcakes, 
Take out the fruit cakes, and it's uh, Barack Obama, 53%, John McCain, 45% in the CNN poll. In the CBS poll, it's Barack Obama, 48%, John McCain, 45%. So uh, there you go, and it's uh, just looking worse and worse for John McCain, and that's why the dirty tricks are beginning, and we'll continue for the next four weeks, and you know how that's going to work. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Here's George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Doing great. I just want to say something. A few callers ago, that guy who was talking about these conspiracy theories, I'm a PhD student in statistics here at Claremont, and I just want to say I've studied those polls, and they do a pretty good job about randomizing their population. It's not perfect, but they do a pretty good job. And to judge a poll, I mean, you just have to look at their sampling errors. Those are pretty small. That means those polls have been accurate, and like you mentioned, they've been correct for the past, I don't know how many years. Over so 50 I years. Over 50 years for Gallup poll. Exactly, and I, I just I can't stand it when these people, without doing any homework, just get on the air and say whatever they want to say because I don't know why they're I don't know what they're talking about. Well, I think they're used to being on the internet and posting any lies they want or any uh, spin they like, uh, and it's uh, unfettered. They can do whatever they like. But on here, you know what? I read. You call in here and try to tell me something that's ups unsubstantiated. I'm going to force you to substantiate, or I'm going to uh, nuke your ass. That's great, Tom. I really, I'm really happy. I'm a, I've been a long time listener. I just, uh, I just, I'm just happy we have people like you to keep people honest. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. It's Michael on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, I had a question uh, regarding uh, what I work in government, uh, doing procurement work, and I want to know how uh, McCain or Obama would affect my job, my ability to progress. You know, to get farther. What kind of work do you do? Procurement. Procurement? Who are you procuring for? Uh, the county of Los Angeles. All right. Well, look, Democrats generally want to spend more money on government, and Republicans want to give money to their friends at the banks and the oil companies. So Barack Obama probably would be your guy. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what, that's what I was planning on going with. Uh, I just wanted to clarify, you know. Uh, well, thanks for your help. It was good talking to you. Take me out uh, with a bong hit and Snoop Dogg style? Sure, here you go, Michael. Biatch! It's 1 800 5800 Tom. It's our telephone number. Patrick on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. All right. The reason I called in, I wanted to get your. Uh... What you think about that uh, upcoming movie, that W movie, and how that, you know, if any way that that's going to affect Oliver the upcoming Stone, election? Oliver Stone is the director. Oliver Stone is totally irrelevant, both in Hollywood and in politics. Nobody's paying any attention. Nobody will see that movie. Nobody. 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 Sounds good. Now, if Michael Moore had a movie coming out now, that would be different. People would pay attention to that. Uh, but uh, Oliver Stone is completely, utterly irrelevant. Sounds good. I mean, and by the way, anytime you put out a movie about political satire or about current events, uh, it tanks. Just ask George Clooney and anyone else who tries doing it. Now, is, is he trying to make it an issue, you know, so close to the election? Is that what he's trying to do? Is well, that's my guess, but when's the last time anybody paid any attention to Oliver Stone? Been a while. <laughs> It's been a long time. I, 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 I mean, I mean, nobody pays attention. I mean, the guy is completely irrelevant. When's the last time the guy had a movie that grossed more than twenty million bucks? Uh, couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either. Sounds good, Tom. Can you uh, take me out, Kobe style? There you go, Patrick. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Uh we could go on Saturday Night Live. Tina Fey was on Saturday Night Live to uh parody Sarah Palin, uh, this time being interviewed by Katie Couric. And here was one of the questions being asked by uh, Amy Poehler as Katie Couric. What lessons have you learned from Iraq, and how specifically would you spread democracy abroad? Specifically, we would make every effort possible to spread democracy abroad to those who want it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, but specifically, what would you do? We're going to promote freedom, usher in democratic values and ideals, and fight terror-loving terrorists. <laughs> But again, and not to belabor the point, one specific thing. <laughs> Katie, I'd like to use one of my lifelines. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to phone a friend. <laughs> You don't have any lifelines. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'm just going to have to get back to you. Oh, my God. That's what it sounds like, too. 1-800-5800-TOP, Saturday Night Live. And you got to be watching it now. I think this Thursday they're doing a special primetime edition of a weekend update of Saturday Night Live. They, uh, they're on all the time now the, during this political season. Thank God. Tell you what. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Brandy on the top like his show, Hella. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hi. Um, I was just calling to thank you for all your support that you're giving to Barack Obama because uh, I'm in the Army, and I get a lot of crap for not being a Republican. But um, I just re-enlisted, so I really, really need Barack to win. And uh, I just really appreciate everything that you're doing to keep McCain out of that office. Well, I, it, it really isn't that difficult. Uh, but after my experience with John McCain back in the mid '80s, uh, I would do anything to keep him from becoming president. I don't care. I don't care who's running against. <laughs> I really appreciate that because, yeah, it's it's a it's a frightening frightening prospect for me. So, thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call, Joe. On the Tom like is can I call you, Joe? Yeah, you can. Uh, by Joe? all means, by you're all means, but you're not you're not as sexy as Sarah is. Okay. There you go again, Joe. No. <laughs> okay. Look, you 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 say you're a fiscal conservative. I've listened to you. I've never called in before. Yes. Okay. Yes. But okay. Do you understand? And you can go to the GAO for this. You want sources? You can go to the GAO and see that every time taxes have been reduced, tax revenue increases. Correct. I, but I'm not concerned about tax revenue increasing. Here's what I'm concerned about: the you, bottom, you, you, you the bottom you, line, the you bottom know, line. Are you okay with your? Taxes I don't going care. Up? I am concerned about the bottom line. Okay. I'm talking about everyone. You know as well as I do that the budget deficit is almost half a billion dollars every year, which it was not in the 90s. Period. End of story. No, you go back to the 80s. The, middle, the black middle class expanded larger under Ronald Reagan when the taxes were... Wait, I, I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm simply talking about the budget deficit. Don't try to confuse the issue. No, I'm not confusing the issue. This the is tax and spend money. republic the this tax and spend Republicans who have been running this country now for the better part of eight years, uh, have run our budget deficit up to half a billion dollars a year, and part of the reason for that was cutting taxes. What can you attribute that to, Tom? What can you attribute that to? I just did. I just attributed it. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, that's our telephone number. Ron on the Tom Like is show hello. Good evening, Tom. Just yeah. wanted to tell you I love your show. Um, first time caller. Just a couple things I wanted to point out because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of logic going on with the appreciation of Sarah Palin. Um, this one point in particular, she's, she's taught in that spe the special needs children of the country. And it, I just found it ironic that prior to her being a person with a special needs child, she cut funding to the programs in Alaska for those people. I might add that if uh, women would stop having babies after age 40, there'd be less special needs children. Uh, very good point as well. And secondly, before Jamie Lynn, her daughter, I'm sorry, I don't mean Jamie Lynn, you know what I mean. It's a joke. But um, before her daughter was pregnant and a single mother, she cut funding to that program as well in her state. So it seems as though the only thing that matters to her is when she becomes personally affected by it. Now, I, I can't disagree with you. And w what is the deal with them having moderators? Oh, Tom, I have to share a quote with you. I don't know if you saw what she did out in Carson. She read a quote from her Starbucks cup. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that. She stated that the, the quote was from Madeleine Albright. The quote read, there's a special place in hell for women that do not support other women. 
So now she's trying to basically get every woman behind her, regardless of how incompetent she is. And I think the quote should be altered to say, there's a special place in women who support incompetent women, because that's going to ruin it for any competent woman to come along in the future and follow up in that position. I think you're absolutely right, Ron. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Job. Hello, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing great. All right. Uh, you know, Sarah Palin is what this country needs to get people in middle, middle America excited about being America, American again. You know, they're going to... Oh, really? So uh, while, they're, while, they're, while people are busy killing themselves and their families because of all the money they lost, while they're busy losing 30% of the 401ks, they need Sarah Palin to get them excited about being Americans. So are you, do you want to live in a socialist regime? Uh, there's not going to be any regime, and there's not going to be any socialism either. Is it is exactly what this is going no, to turn into? No, it isn't. Two to five years. No, it isn't. And, and, and you want your taxes to go up. You don't care about that. My taxes have gone up uh, because the dollar that I have today is worth way less than the dollar I had eight years ago. So my you, I, my taxes have been raised. You, you keep quoting Bill Clinton... I mean, the, about the 90s and how great it was. And yes. Like, that was a bubble. That was a bubble. The, the, if you look back historically. What do you call, what do you bubble. call, what do you call what we've had the last eight years? It's the downturn of a bubble busting. That's what happens. Uh, I see. I, I think I've had just about enough. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.